Recently I got several loads of reclaimed lumber and this is the bottom slats from a bunk bed and it is very nice hard maple. Some of the pieces even have some nice curl in them. I'm gonna try to make a large segmented sculpture. I want to make 12 segmented rings with 12 pieces each. So that means I have to cut 144 of these wedges out of this wood. I hold them together for about a minute and that's long enough to allow the glue to get tacky and they stick together and then I'll just let that glue dry for about 30 minutes. I think I'm gonna go take a break and get a drink of water. It's hot in here. Another 90, 95 degree day. I had to make myself sweatbands out of some old t-shirts so I wouldn't drip sweat on the wood. The next step is once these dry, I will sand the faces smooth and then glue them into rings. My finger has turned into a prune from spreading around all the glue. You know when you lay in the bubble bath for a little too long and your fingers get all wrinkly? Yeah. What? Doesn't everybody take bubble baths? So the problem I have with gluing up these rings like this is even if I put them down flat and use rubber bands, my miter saw is not accurate enough and these never line up <laughs> no matter how hard I try. So I don't even bother anymore. As you can see there's a bit of a gap. So I basically put these on the disc sander to flatten these faces so I can glue them together like this into full rings. Now I want donuts. Now that this is sanded up to 400, I'm just gonna cut a few 2x4s to use as waste blocks on the other side. Got one down, only 11 more to go. I'll spare you the boredom of watching me do 11 more of these things. Now comes the tough part, figuring out how to glue these back together the way I want to put them together. In order to figure out the right angles, I drew it on my computer and experimented with different sizes and angles. So I think I've decided I'm gonna use this blue pattern. And what I did was to figure out the angle, I simply took a protractor, put it against the screen, measure the angles. Now I'm just gonna make a simple jig to help me glue the pieces back together. These are all 48 degrees. I have another jig that is 18 degrees. I'm gonna use again once these are dry to glue them all together. I'm gonna let these dry overnight and then I'm gonna come back with the rotary tool and just smooth out these joints and sand them so they're smooth. <laughs> Now that I have these glued joints sanded up and smooth, time to start gluing them together with my other jig. So my jig wasn't working right. Because the wood is heavy, it was difficult to hold it for an extended period of time. So what I did was I measured the distance I wanted between the rings. And then I made these little spacers, taped them on one side, 
and held them on for about two minutes while the glue was tacky enough to stay together and that seems to be working much better. Somehow I got my angles wrong so I can't put this all together. Somehow I've managed to have too much of a gap in here so my spacers were the wrong size. So I need to break these apart somehow. I pulled these apart where the glue was still a little bit wet. It was difficult to pull them apart, I gotta say. I've been told many times that end grain, end grain glue ups are not very strong. I was surprised how well they stuck together actually. Anyway, I glued these back together with a much narrower gap right here. All right, that looks like it's gonna work. My, uh, the gaps between my loops are not consistent, but at least I won't have to take them all apart. It's the next morning now, and I just have to work on smoothing out these joints where I glued them up last night. I filled this one with some CA glue and sawdust last night. There was a slight gap there that I had to fill, but other than that, it's looking pretty cool. Well, I just spent about an hour with the rotary tool and the file in order to smooth out some of these joints. Now I gotta switch to the sandpaper. Spend a few hours sanding. Guess I'll go with four feet. Time for the butcher. I call this the butcher because it tends to tear out the grain. And it's difficult to control because it's big and I'm only using a handheld drill. I don't have a drill press or anything like that. I understand why I even try using this thing <laughs> sometimes. And that's why I call it the butcher. Crack the grain there. Alright, that's one coat done. I'll probably put at least two more coats on, but I'm calling it there. Well, I think this has been my most ambitious sculpture yet, obviously. Didn't quite work out how I wanted because these gaps are inconsistent. Although not that inconsistent because one's wide, one's narrow, one's wide, one's narrow. So, who's done that way intentionally? Yeah. But oh man, it's hot in here. I'm looking forward to taking a break. So thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button. I'm very active on Instagram, so you can check me out over there, at Cammy's Garage. If you enjoy what I do and like to support me, feel free to check out my Etsy shop. Maybe you'll find something you like over there. We'll see you next time in Cammy's Garage.